one very very interesting aspect uh, in most uh, financial markets all over the world is the existence of mutual funds and i don't want to bore you with the history of mutual funds but the whole idea of his mutual funds is that some uh, professional will manage a portfolio for you and invest it into all the uh, stocks that we discussed earlier that some sort of businesses and they will build a portfolio of these businesses for you and uh, the mutual fund then becomes like a vehicle for you uh, to park your money periodically so that you can uh, save your uh, put your savings to work over a period of time instead of you doing all the work somebody else professionals do the work for you imagine it like a professional driver driving you around in your own car and uh, taking you on your errands and dropping you from point a to point b it's like a professional who is taking care of everything you don't have to worry about uh, what they are doing over a period of time but a caveat over here also just like a driver has a skill every mutual fund manager also will have a skill there is another level of complexity i don't want to introduce to you right now but definitely the mutual fund concept has been around for a long time across the world and especially in india it has had a very long history uh, the oldest mutual fund product i think is now 25 years old uh, so you will have a long history of investors making money in uh, by keeping money in mutual funds over a long period of time and there are different strategies like you put a large sum of money at one point which is, te- is technically called as lump sum investment or you can also do a sip which most people think is sip is different from mutual fund actually it's not sip is a way of investing in a mutual fund which is a systematic investment plan which you do uh, on a monthly basis uh, you can actually keep putting some money aside from your uh, savings to going into mutual funds so again these are different techniques and the product is so simple to use uh, that it is available like how you buy shares nowadays and actually buy mutual funds also very easily nowadays uh, so that evolution has happened so that it's become very easy for the consumer investor to actually put their money into mutual funds at a moment's notice now and mutual funds are also around they are heavily regulated so one of the most regulated investment product uh, right now is the mutual fund which has all the restrictions very very strict so i work for a mutual fund company so i'm aware of the regulations don't want to bore you with the details but the whole idea is that it's heavily regulated it's ma- monitored by uh, sebi which is the securities regulator in india uh, capital market regulator in india and uh, all these names you might have heard because you might be generally aware of how the market works uh, so these are regulated products which are uh, not very easy to sell uh, you cannot just set up a mutual fund company tomorrow morning you need to have a history in the capital markets and then also you may not get a chance to uh, start a mutual fund you also need uh, some sort of a financial backing to start a mutual fund company also so you there are only 50 mutual fund companies in our country at the moment imagine 50 in a country of 1.4 billion uh, 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 population again in mutual funds when you start looking and start reading about it you'll come across these two different categories of mutual funds and i think over a period of time the mutual fund industry has also simplified itself uh, a meaningful way by creating very specific categories for investors to choose from and some of these categories again are better suited for say a financial advisor to help you understand rather than you directly picking up and understanding them because they will be again based on the same principle i mentioned earlier of time horizon of your investment so if you are looking at a pure equity product which is only investing in equity uh, it has its own nature of uh, it is a long term nature of product so it has its own way of uh, putting money into it you have to use a longer term approach for putting money that means you cannot just put money once and tomorrow morning you should expect return to come to you it takes a while for that product to work that's why sip a systematic investment plan actually helps in that particular way but there are other kinds of mutual funds like debt mutual funds which also allow you to invest in different way and we'll talk about that little later when we discuss debt so in debt uh, most people are generally aware of debt investing in the form of fixed deposit especially people like me also who are born middle class and live in an urban environment and parents are working class and who may not have exposure to equity or mutual funds when we were younger uh, so i'm a 90s kid so generally uh, in the 90s i was in school is what i meant by 90s kid not a born in the 90s but in that time frame i only saw people around me uh, save in two ways one was keeping money in fixed deposit and the other one was either property or gold so we'll talk about those things also after this but uh, fixed deposit is a very very popular product it is the largest uh, fixed income investment or debt investment uh, on an absolute basis if you see in our country this is the largest financial asset that most people have and the industry has 
so it's very very hard for people who have not heard of a bank fd or a fixed deposit uh, but the idea of fixed deposit is very simple and that's why people like it a lot is because when they sign up for a fixed deposit or when they open a fd uh, they exactly know how much return they are going to get in the form of interest rate so that is a level of certainty that most people envy and generally because of that certainty you get a smaller or a lower value of fixed deposit and in between if you see why a uh, fixed deposit became a little bit difficult to understand why you suddenly saw people doing stock market trading or doing fno options or doing gold or other things of trading that people do is because the fixed deposit interest rates in in the interim uh, had uh, fallen and they had become a little lower than what people were used to in the past so in their mind people thought that this is no longer a great investment to have and it's a fair thought to have because we discussed earlier that you have your inflation right and if your if your income or if your uh, profits from your investments are not growing at the same rate as your spending patterns are or your expenses are growing then you will obviously feel the pinch that okay your investments are not returning as much to you as they should have or as they were doing in the past so people generally thought fixed deposit may not be a good idea so started trying out different uh, financial investment options like mutual like mutual funds like gold or other things where they could easily park uh, in the same manner but fixed deposit is the most uh, popular product uh, from senior citizens to college going kids everybody understands this and even fixed deposits there are these various type of fixed deposit which are very smart fixed deposit products available now so it's plain vanilla one is you put the money in you did you, you get the uh, interest rate that you're going to get for sure and you know at what time period you have uh, put the put the amount there so you know that okay it's a one year fixed deposit it is going to mature on a particular day you know the date also and they give option to you whether you want to renew that fixed deposit when it matures or you want that money to be deposited to your account okay so this is always given to you always known to you so it's a very easy product to understand because of that there are some products which are available now again don't want to bore you but this is a very simple uh, one second uh, analogy i want to give is like what if you need some part of the fixed deposit you don't want to break the entire fixed deposit then there is also a different product available which allows you to withdraw a little bit of the amount and only that much amount is given to you without charging you a penalty for breaking that fixed deposit and why do you charge a penalty for breaking any fixed deposit is because the bank has Uh, planned a schedule of their investment based on what deposits you have put so if you are breaking your commitment for that period the bank may have to break their commitment somewhere else which might have a cost so they might recover that cost from you that's just a simplified way of telling you why banks charge penalty but this product exists and people understand it very very vividly in the same way there are mutual fund products which i told you i'll discuss uh, during the equity debt dichotomy showed earlier that in mutual funds also there are debt mutual funds available which also provide the same flexibility but at the same time they allow you to break it very very easily so if you are investing in a debt oriented mutual fund scheme knowing that that investment is only going to be used for less than 5 years period when you know know for sure that the money is or it is something that you want to invest in debt you want to put a certain amount of money in debt uh, then mutual fund becomes a better option so that you can withdraw a little bit also from it without affecting the uh, overall investment over a period of time and mutual funds direct mutual funds do something little different than what banks bank fixed deposits do here the return is not guaranteed to you because the value of the mutual fund unit also will keep on moving up and down based on the market value of what the mutual fund has bought in don't bother yourself with the complications in fixed deposit a straight line is given to you in mutual funds the line goes up but it may not be straight it might be squiggly it might move a little bit up and down that's the whole point about debt mutual funds but this also provides you another alternative and we can certainly take up some questions if at all this is something which people are interested to understand but to be very fair equity mutual funds 5 years plus horizon if you have great product to uh, keep your savings in less than 5 years if you have then right from the bank fixed deposit to debt mutual funds available in the market can be a good personal choice for you uh, from your savings point of view again very very important to again reiterate point that when do you need the money so if it's less than 5 years like i mentioned uh, make sure that you keep into debt kind of products and if it is longer than 5 years then you know it's going to be used for retirement or even any time which is beyond 5 years then equity becomes a very very uh, good option for you because in that 5 years period a lot of things would have changed the market would have grown companies which you bought would have grown the portfolios would do better 
over a period of time. Not all of them will do better. That's why you also diversify amongst that asset class. But over a period of time, you realize that it has grown in value and which is slightly better uh, than your uh, fixed deposits or your uh, debt mutual funds option that are there. So you get penalized for time, right? So sometimes the longer you wait, sometimes you might get better results over a period of time, which is basically called the compound interest concept, which we know. Uh, and if you have a shorter term horizon, then you get penalized for having a shorter term horizon, but which is fine. Your uh, financial goals are dependent on how you want to spend that money. The money is not, the saving is not uh, the ultimate goal of life. The ultimate goal of life is to use that savings for some uh, productive thing or some personal joy that you want to have. So the whole point is to make sure that savings are protected to achieve those personal goals. We are not trying to create savings as a goal. Savings is a very important function that, as a tool that you have for achieving your life's goals. But again, one thing I also want to caveat here is that it's not always compulsory to have uh, a short-term goal to invest in debt products. And I'll clarify this because sometimes you might just don't want to take the equity risk. You want a less return, that is fine which debt generally gives lesser return in the longer term than equity. And you have to be very, very aware that uh, once the uh, debt investments are made, uh, the investments will have their own returns, which is specified from what they're investing in. But you may not have the capacity or you may not have the, uh, I would say, risk appetite to stay invested in a more volatile equity kind of product. You might actually feel more nervous by putting more money into equity, which is fine. Then you keep a little bit more money into debt. So your overall returns might be a little bit less, but because your risk appetite itself is a little less, it actually helps you to uh, sleep peacefully at night if you have some money kept into debt. And that is the reason why I meant that sometimes it may not be always compulsory. So just like every rule is an exception, this also has an exception that it may not be compulsory for you to keep your money always into uh, equity because it's longer term. Sometimes a longer term debt might also be a good option for you. Maybe you're retired and you want to consume out of your retired income. You might want to protect some of it by keeping a little bit more into debt than you are keeping it into uh, equity. Or if you're a very young person, you might have to keep a little bit less in debt. You can have emergency funds or you can have funds which will basically quickly replace your income if something goes wrong with your practice or whatever. It may not, uh, if you lose a job somewhere or whatever, this emergency fund will quickly help you take care of your expenses. Uh, so the emergency fund will always be kept in debt because that money has to be accessible very instantly. You can't keep that money into equity markets and take that risk of that value of the emergency fund uh, reducing. Uh, so there are, some of these options are the exceptions to the rule of why uh, debt may not be always a short term kind of a thing. But always remember that figuring out uh, when you require the money is probably half the battle won. You'll actually be very relieved when you know that some of these things just fall into place over a period of time. And does not require too much of detailed planning. So if you don't know how to do this yourself, and if you don't want to self-study and everything, a lot of financial planners and advisors will actually guide you very, very comfortably. There are questionnaires available. And most people's life goals are generally very similar. It's not like too different. <laughs> Unless you're a business person, then your life goals are dramatically different sometimes. But otherwise, generally, the goals are similar, right? So once you put it in perspective and understand how much things how much inflation works for all these different things. Like what, what would it cost to get married five years from now? What would it cost to buy a car five years from now? Or what would it cost you to send a kid to college five, 10 years, 20 years from now? So all these things have some bearing in reality. You will see the numbers in reality. Uh, how, what is the cost of uh, medical expenses? Uh, over something doctors might be intimately aware of. So generally you are aware that things will inflate and you will have to plan for that expense in the future. So to also inflate that required amount of money in the future. So yeah, this really, the goal setting actually helps a lot uh, when you do it in financial uh, savings.